Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another Wizard 101 video and today I thought I'd go over level 130 Myth Gear sets or max level gear sets. Uh, I mean, this gear will probably get outdated later on in the future, but I thought I would just do it now for the for for my Myth Wizards out there that aren't exactly level 130. Oh boy, this <laughs> this I I didn't realize I had this gold wave on here. But anyway, we're gonna go see which sets I'm gonna. Well, actually, right right now I'm gonna show you which sets that I have, which I think is pretty useful. So the first set I have here is the main set. This main set mainly consists of balanced stats, and this is, I think it's the highest balanced stats that you can have as a Myth Wizard. I like to think so. So as we can see right now, you have 126 damage. 51% resist, 25 accuracy, I mean you can bump that damage up to 127, I don't have a max, the amount of damage I have on my pet isn't max damage, so what I have right now is 126, so I'm only 1% off or away from max damage, for this set I mean. Then we have critical rating, critical rating is decent, although it's not what you would call like storm quality or fire quality. I mean obviously it's gonna be higher than Myth Wizards because we're sandwiched like below that, okay? We're sandwiched between between Fire Wizards and Storm Wizards and that's really one of the problems that we as Myth Wizards face because we don't hit as hard as Storm or Fire Wizards and defensively we're comparative to Fire Wizards health wise and defensive resistance wise. So next we have here, I know you're gonna laugh, but 3%, I, I know what you're thinking, 3%, that's not gonna help Hunter, you should just equip like a Baba Yaga's Focus Mace. I could do that, it's just, well, who would have 3% more, more block than me in PvP? I'm not gonna do PvP, but honestly, 3% more, it's just there just to help me a little bit with block. I'm probably not gonna block 97% of the, the criticals that come my way but if there's like a sliver of hope between like 1 to 3% that I can block I will definitely choose 3% over 1%. Next we have here is 25% piercing and 15% universal piercing. However I do have an option of changing the jewels up making this up to 75% critical and this only 15% across the board. But I decided to have like 10%. Now you, obviously you can have 27% piercing but I just decided to have 25% because it just seems as as thoroughly as a decent number as it can be. It can slice uh well it can essentially slice a tower shield in half so that's all there really is to it. Stun resistance is 5% because I was pretty lazy and 5% can cover, well it can basically cover conviction or it's basically a fail safe in case that 5% that 95% stun resistance actually gets caught through stun. So I just have that 5% there just to have that conviction cover. 27% incoming is important because if you're, if you have a healer, normally I don't have the Morgan's dagger just because it gives outgoing instead of incoming. I know it gives like 1% more damage, but the thing is, as a Myth Wizard, you can, you, you should have healing, incoming, I mean. You're probably not gonna heal, obviously, I mean, Life Wizards, they're mostly gonna heal you, so I have that incoming just for that reason. Next we have pip conversion and power pip chance. So pip conversion is only at 4% just because I don't have a wand or an amulet that gives me any pip conversion at all. So it's not that you need any pip conversion because there's ultimately really no spells that need pip converting unless you have like a minion like Talos, Orthrus, or Minotaur if you're doing, doing that in PvP I mean. And for power pip chance, we have a total of 
So uh, honestly, you could switch this up around. I have the three robes that people tend to use the most. The Bone Smasher Robe of Threams and the Kandavasi Victor's Gear. The reason why I have these three robes is because, well, the Kandavasi Victor's Gear, it gives Power Pip Chance and it gives pretty good accuracy. Which will cover you in PvP if you really need that certain accuracy where Lore Masters and Black Mantles are abound. But ultimately, if you go in questing and farming, I would just go with the Quixotic Light Brigade Armor. And really, if you're trying to make this set work in PvP, it probably won't work for you as I've, I've only oriented this set towards questing or farming. The next set we have is the PvP Set 1. The PvP Set 1 essentially allows you to have good damage and good resistance. But the main drawback is that your block rating, it's low like everybody else in PvP. Nowadays since PvP doesn't really matter a whole I mean sorry, nowadays since block rating doesn't matter a whole lot, you're gonna see this 1% rating across the board in all categories of wizards. And as far as critical goes, you got 30%. I know that's pretty low, but if you have the focus or any focused one for that matter, the revered focused ones, you're gonna have pretty low critical, unless you have a critical pet to back it up. But you're probably not gonna have a critical pet. You have triple and double. So armor piercing, I can have this up to 40% if I really did want it to. And like I said before, I don't have the max piercing jewels. I could try to farm for those, but I feel as though it could take me too much time. And you'll see with the other PvP set, I actually have the max piercing jewels on that one. So as far as damage goes, we have 131% damage, which is pretty good. You're probably not gonna do higher against a storm wizard or a fire wizard, but I think it's pretty decent nonetheless. 50% 50 50% is the base minimum in PvP. I I don't recommend anyone to go less than 50% because it's the standard of anything goes in PvP. 50% is just a borderline between having a tower shield and having something that sort of resembles a tower shield but can't really protect you. And accuracy wise, you gotta have high accuracy in order to compete with the amount of spam that you get from Lore Master against Balance Wizards. And mainly, I don't, I don't particularly have anything else for this set. The most obvious thing that stands out is the pip conversion. You have 33%, so if you really wanted to, you can summon minions and have one third of a chance to get that power pip back, or get that pip back from having power pips instead of like four having pips, I mean. Anyway, power pip chance is pretty good. Shadow pip chance is, well, the same as for everyone across the board. So our. So as for as far as the PvP sets go, this is essential for every single PvP player out there. It's a necessity that I almost almost preach about. And it's you really need this dual daredevil thing. At level 100, I mean. If it's anything above, it's not really recommended because while well, they give critical and critical while useful in PvP, it's not as useful as having 6% piercing. So the second set we have here relies more on a little bit of critical block, not a whole lot, but you do drop down 10% from the original PvP set 1, and you have 1% less resistance and reduced accuracy. The bonuses that you get is a little bit of critical, about 9% more. Lock rating, it, it sure has increased a lot, okay? You have 21% resistance, and as far as armor piercing goes, you have 1% less, but that's because, that's mainly due to the fact that I, 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 I equipped a different want, okay? The revered mace, 
may look appealing, but it's really not for me if if I'm being really serious here. I just like having critical block because you're never gonna know when you actually block. I know some people in PvP that have actually blocked with 1% and having 21 times more of that or 22 times in my case, it's, it's pretty essential at least for me. I think it's essential. So like with PvP set 1, we have the boots that I think are pretty useful, in my opinion. Having 12% resistance is nothing to scoff at. Um, I, I like to think I, I'm comparing myself to an Ice Wizard, but they have 10% more, or if not, 70% more, 70 resist than me. Well, compared to me, I mean. Obviously, you, you're gonna want the Kondavasi Victor's Hood, because that 11% resist, it's pretty useful. And you're, you're probably not going to equip this, the Myth Conicle, it's just, you need resistance in PvP. Like I said, 50% is the borderline that you should always have. Now as far as amulets go, you have the Relic of the Shadow Palace. The reason why I equip this is because, well, versus the Universal Memento, versus uh, PvP Set 1, the, the reason why I equip this one is because it gives me blades and it gives me a little bit more health. Sure, I lose like 1% piercing, or sorry, 2% piercing and 1% resistance, but the gains that I have is far more useful than, let's say, this. What also comes standard at level 130 is a Mythic Paradox deck that I think everybody should have because or every myth wizard should have at this level. Although, it's you could also equip the Rasputin deck. The reason why I like to compare these two is if you look at the max number of copies, 8 versus 6, that's really all it amounts to. Whether you want to have a certain amount of hits in or a certain amount of blades in, I just, it's really optional and really depends up on you, okay? If you want to lose 10%, you can go ahead and lose 10% critical. Not that it really matters a whole lot. Wow, I have been talking quite a lot. But anyway, here is actually my last set that I've saved for last. This is the set that I use up against storm bosses. I- look guys, I don't- I generally don't use this for myth- I mean for PvP purposes, because I just think it's generally really <laughs> it's really unfair to the opponent. Not that there are many storm wizards in PvP in the first place. And as you can see here, 100% damage. It's okay, I wish it was a little higher. But the main reason why I have this set at it, what it is, is because... Well, you can also interchange this with the armor of the Quixotic Brigade. Which is entirely up to you whether you want to have a little bit more accuracy. But I would just go with the Light Brigade armor because it gives me 1% more damage. Everything else, it seems pretty good. I mean, you have resistance that is pretty nice. You got, well, you have massive storm resist that could be bolstered by brace. If you really wanted to do that, you could. I mean, what I like to do, um... This set, this set is actually for Corporal Tennyson, and I'm really prepared for this because I've, the things that I do is that I research something first before I go up against it. That's one of the things I always do in, in battles when I'm questing, is like, let's say I'm up against Morgan, I need to know her cheats, I need to refresh myself on like, say, my Storm Wizard, I need to figure that out, so... That's generally what I do beforehand. So accuracy wise, we got 33%, which is pretty good. I mean, it could be a little bit better, but it's okay. Critical, it's it's actually not that bad, 47%. Yo, I find this set to critical more often than not, just because I'm not really sure why, but every single time I hit, I always critical. I've never had this set actually not critical before. It's really weird. Block rating, it it generally doesn't matter much because it's 
it's not anything like 50%, so you're probably not going to be blocking anyway. But it's just there just because. I don't know what else to say. Um, as far as armor piercing goes, it's 15% straight across the board. There's no specific piercing like myth so really that's all it amounts to stun resist i put it at 15 percent just because i'm not really sure i mean it kind of just ended up that way uh, and incoming incoming is really important for this set because you're not going to do the majority of the healing or healing at all you're just going to take in the amount of healing after you take a lot of damage Power pips, it's it's okay. It could be a little bit better, but you you would be sacrificing a little bit of accuracy. Nine percent is pretty good, also. And while we're at it, I think we should take a look at the gear. Gear wise, we have the Conv the Vossi Victor's hood, which we've we've all seen before. The robe you've seen before, the Quixotic Light Brigade robe. But here we have the Wisterian Warrior Sabatons. The reason why I have this is because it gives a unique card called Shockwave, which stuns the enemy and removes one shield. In cases where I don't necessarily have time to do that, I could just stun into a piercing... It, it's, it's a combination between pierce and blinding light, so it's one of the reasons why I like using this. Just to save time and, well, convenience purposes. Wand is a absolutely good necessity to have is the Road Warriors Legend Skull. The Legend Skull isn't at level 120 so it could be a little bit better or my stats could be a little bit better than this but the, it's really hard to obtain. The Dirk of the Dimwood Veil, vale, I could switch to the Dirk, the other Dirk of the Dimwood Veil vale with piercing but I decided to go with critical because you're probably not going to pierce anything against a storm boss anyway. You're, you're only going to pierce their fortify. That's all you want. And obviously you're going to want a bit more storm resistance. This is quite a necessity for all well, for all jade wizards that have storm resist pets or storm ward pets. And really the reason why I have this is just to bolster the amount of storm resistance I have. At the moment, I think people were waiting for for this is the pet. I wanted to showcase this along with the other special pets or unique pets I do have in stock. I mean, just look at this. I have like 14 pages of pets. You think I don't collect pets? I never trash pets that I have just because... Even if they're first generations, I believe they have potential no matter what. And I know that's like a pretty awful op optimistic outlook, but that's my that's my generalization on that subject. It's essential that you have that extra myth damage to have 100% damage. I mean, if you don't have this, then you have really, really bad damage. So it's my reasoning to have that certain amount of damage. Could I have a better pet with better cards? Sure, but I like ladybugs and that's one of the pets that I've had for such a long time since I think 2015. The longest time I remember was Lord Gigi and it had, it, it didn't have the best stats. I mean, it had Myth Giver, Myth Dealer, Unicorn, <laughs> Fairy Friend, and Spellproof, which it's not good at all. But anyway, as far as my mount goes, it does apply in battles, although the real odd thing about the Corsair or the Clockwork Corsair is that it gives only 1% piercing. Even though it shows up as 2% on the stats screen or the, sc the stats page, it's only 1%. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's it's that little. I mean, it's it's quite it's quite shocking. It kind of reminds me of a pet with, with fake... 15% spell proof and defy. It's just, I'm not sure why they made it that way. But anyway, I guess that's, it's not rounded to like 2%. But anyway, guys, I hope this helped you myth wizards out at level 130. Or if you have any other suggestions for 
if you're a myth wizard yourself, you know, you make suggestions if you want, if your gear is better than mine. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and if it helped you, make sure to click the like button or if you didn't like the video, click the like button or if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care and peace. Uh, say bye bye, Gold Wavern. Okay, he, he ain't doing it. <laughs> see you guys.